Martin Lapman of Alternative Heating Solutions. And we moved the 4000 up next to the G200. And there's a few things here and there I haven't covered in the other videos. And I, this will be the last one on this. Same setup before. All the cleaning can be done from the front. No need for another door to have to maintain and keep sealed. And it's there's the ash rake to get behind the refractory. Come up, up flip the ash rake to the side, and drag them right out. things on back we now have a standard one inch port and an inch and a half so if you need to run more than two circuits you just tee in take this reducer elbow off and put a another uh, straight inch and a half elbow then a T so you can flow three pumps if you have to uh, covered the oxygen sensor already it basically self-adjusts the um, air to fuel ratio. That bottom damper will open and close to make sure it has just the right amount of air for the amount of wood gas being produced. Covered the new cooling. And here we have a just a cheapy Wi-Fi repeater and it's plugged into the jack that's provided. And when I put my 7,000 in, I will be trenching a cable to it and running a solid ethernet cable out here. I've already pissed around with that repeater about 15 minutes this morning. It just refuses to stay on the same uh, network as the stove runs on. I've lost a lot less sleep putting in cables than I have messing around with these repeaters. A few other things. Like I said, they changed the handles. And now it has to be snapped all the way for it to close the switch where it shuts down. And there's that oxygen sensor cable. Comes down to a six pin plug with five wires. Uh, the extra wires is this does have a heater built in. Oxygen sensors will not work until it re reach a certain temperature. And you do not have to worry that if your sensor goes bad, the stove's going to shut down and freeze up or anything. If the sensor's not working right, the stove will still operate. You're just not going to get quite as high efficiency of it because it can't get the bottom air dialed in perfectly for the amount of wood gas. So I have the wife's phone here. And of course it just went to sleep. It basically displays whatever the stove is displaying. And not only that though, you can toggle through the other screens. And there you can see we actually added a run time hour meter so you know how long the stove's actually been running. There's your water temp, differential, oxygen content, and so on, low shutoff. And you will see like I said, it'll display what the stove does. And see, we open the bypass. And phone went to sleep again. There we go. And yeah, it's not near as sophisticated as some others out there. It doesn't have graphing capabilities. But it is a start. Rome was not built in a day, contrary to some people's beliefs. And here we are, we're gonna power it up. It's gonna do its little thing. And it'll get to the cold start here in a second. There, low temp, press cold start button to reset. And when they're first powered on, that oxygen sensor is gonna read extremely low, like 0.2. It's not defective. They have to reach a certain temperature for the work. 
and this is a five wire sensor. The extra wires are running a teeny little heating element in them. And what it's doing, since the oxygen's so low, it thinks the secondary chamber needs more air. It doesn't have enough, so it's opening up the bottom air damper more. And you'll see, once it actually starts to read, that bottom air damper will go the other direction because now the oxygen content be way too high. Uh, that's user, or user um, changeable. Come set at 5%. You can experiment, try different settings, see what happens. Uh, the 5% seems to be what works best. And now that bottom one will close down to, yep, 10%. That's the minimum opening. Because right now it's got, it thinks it has way too much oxygen. Uh, the other little thing, you can see the little light. When your network's up and running, that light will blink as it transmits data. Uh, the other thing I failed to mention is if you've been having motor issues, go ahead and contact your dealer about getting a set of the high temperature bearings. Uh, they took motors they thought were completely trashed change the bearings and they work just fine now a few other things here since some people got their knickers in a knot and one of our competitors is real bad about making stuff up but here's the test report and this is from last year even though steel tech just got the coil in it was sitting in a corner of the warehouse somewhere or something. But 409 steel. Melted and manufactured in the USA. We don't use imported steel. Now, for the other one. June 13th. Almost two months ago. This is the letter that's telling Steel Tech, yes, your model did pass, and yes, you can go ahead and sell it. But it's been two months, and they still can't update their website. So that, folks, is your tax dollars at work. Well, more like your tax dollars on Siesta. Uh, this has been Martin Lappin with Alternative Heating Solutions. If you find my videos the least bit helpful, please subscribe to my channel. And if the women don't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy.